right. Welcome everyone to Nonproductive's covering of covering. Yeah, sure. Covering of Wheel of Time, the Amazon original series. The first three episodes. We're gonna go full spoilers for this. I have, of course, Frank, your 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 pal, your buddy. Uh, I uh, I'm here with a cast of uh, good friends that are. We're gonna we're gonna talk, geek out about Wheel of Time. I have a confession to make before we begin. I sadly about five minutes into watching the first episode realized oh i've never actually read any of these books i i thought i did the cover is em emblazoned in my memory the cover of the eye of the world with the, the the folks on horseback but i've never so it was experiencing this for the first time for me it's yeah that's the cover exactly uh but i'm here with experts people who've actually read the books and uh, watch the show. We're just going to talk about those first three episodes. Uh, let's first up. Let's uh, let's do a quick introduction of Natty, Natty Bumper Car, old friend, old pal. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into this series. Howdy, gang. So yeah, me, Natty Bumper Car. I, um, growing up, read a lot of fantasy and stuff, and uh, kind of was of age when these came out. In 1990, I think Eye of the World came out. And I would have been a sophomore in high school because I'm remarkably old. And uh, I think I just stumbled upon. I worked in a comic book store, and I think it was it was there. And I found it and just read it, and then kind of stumbled my way through the books. Read all of them. Even had issues. I mean, like a lot of issues, which I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, but you know, kind of stuck with it through highs and lows. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for the show. You shared a, a wonderful little story at the beginning that I, I would be remiss not to remind you. Uh, you didn't know when there were sequel books coming out for the, at least the first few. Oh, no yeah. idea. I know this was, this was in the dark ages before the internet. And I mean, the way you would find media, especially I was an only child. So I didn't have like an older brother or sibling to say, hey, dork, read this or whatever. I, I would just, and I was in, I grew up in a small town in Georgia. And so like, there not a, not a wealth of culture going on or, or a, a, access to stuff. And so I, everything was just stumbled upon. And then like another book would come out a few years later. And I was just like, what the, it just keeps going. <laughs> uh, and, and, and going and going what felt like most of my life, uh, the, this book series. And eventually Robert Jordan, the author died. And it was a real like crossroads in my life where I felt like, wait, well, wait, like what? It doesn't, I need things to be finished. My wife calls me a completionist because I need, I need things to be complete, done. And so it's a real OCD thing, I think. And uh, it was, it was, it was a, good sword of Damocles hanging above me. And and then uh, some other gent hopped in and finished, turned the last book, I think, into like another 20 books. So <laughs> Yeah. Robert Jordan had planned ahead at least and had someone yeah. covering him. So that he, he was looking out for you. I appreciate yeah. it. RJ. All right. Next, in my next uh, old buddy, old pal, Judd. Judd, please. Hey, uh, my name is Judd. I... Uh, publish a podcast called daydreaming about dragons where i talk about tabletop role-playing games and and uh also the media that you know kind of nerdy media generally or or art in general and how that inspires and and what you can what i take from those things and bring them and bring to the table uh and i started reading at about 91 and i think a couple books were out already when i started reading so maybe 91 92 and and was just really excited and i got I mean, I'm looking at the Wikipedia page and I'm, I, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I got farther than I thought I got about, I got to about book nine, I think winter's heart, which is a little over a million words in. Wow. And I read the prologue and I didn't remember any of the characters names who were mentioned. And I was like, either he's introducing new characters or I remember nothing either way. I think I'm off this train now. And I stopped. I think if I had, if, you know, if I had a, if the internet had existed like it does now, and I could have just gone and read a, you know, a synopsis and just reviewed, I might have 
finished and and gone through. But uh, I tried to reread it years later, uh, you know, in my forties, and th there was a scene where a, a male practitioner of the One Power was describing how to use the One Power to how he interacted with the One Power to to some ladies who were also One Power practitioners, and he described how he dominated it and and you know submitted it to his will and then the ladies were like oh well we have to submit to it and 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 you know be submissive and i uh i managed not to throw you know th thanks to a loved one i managed not to throw my my, my kindle across the room because i found that <laughs> pretty frustrating but yeah I, I yeah i'm excited about the tv show i think sometimes those those things that are kind of guilty faves can make the best types of adaption so i'm excited yeah where we get into this we're going to be talking about what we hope an adapt uh, adaptation will do for oh a yeah story that that you know many people hold dear uh lauren let's my my new buddy new pal lauren introduce yourself i'm lauren uh never done a podcast never done anything like this but i really love wheel of time i've loved it since high school um my friends and i would read it and trade books and uh we were super excited about it joined the fan club online um if there was cosplay at the time we would have cosplayed mm -hmm. um we definitely um for ren fair like dressed up in our aja colors um yeah so we were we were very cool Nice. Very, nice. Cool. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, yeah, so that was like 2005, 2006, and then Robert Jordan died, and we kind of stopped reading it uh, just because it took a while, and, and we were teenagers, and uh, we forgot about it. And then uh, we got back into it, and uh, well, I got back into it. I don't know if my friends did. They might have. They might have given up on it. But uh, reread them. Reread the first couple. Well, first dozen, and then uh, got through the last. Couple. <laughs> yeah, wow. more, than, more than a couple. But um, finally read them all. Um, can't say that I remember what happened in the last couple, but I'm sure I'll reread it. That's one then. thing. So I, I, you know, I say I'm a big fantasy fan, and uh, you know, I, I love, well, daydreaming about dragons. I love thinking about uh, fantasy worlds and and imagining how the the stories would go in my head but the one thing i never quite understood about really fantasy readers is how they could commit to these huge series that are just dozens of books long i just i can't i could barely finish one book if i'm lucky and knowing on the onset like natty you didn't know there was going to be well nobody knew there was going to be 14 books in the in the series but uh, like even when nowadays they'll publish books saying this is the first of a series. And I'm like, I can't, I can't commit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's well, crazy. I was but, just looking at the Wikipedia and I have now learned that the first book came out in 1990, January, the second book, November, 1990, which I don't even, I, I don't, I don't Adam understand. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then 91, 92, 93, 94, so he was just like cranking these things out. Like yeah. in my mind, it was just like there was years in between, but maybe it just took me that long to find them or something. I don't know. Mm. Well, a lot of uh, writing. Yeah, it's I mean, it's impressive. I don't you know, I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. I like the, if you enjoy the commitment that is, you know, a well to revisit over and over again. That's great. But for me, it's just shocking. Wait, so, what what Lauren what 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 Aja was Lauren? That's what we have to know. What when you I was to gonna ask that too. Brown. Brown. All right. As a I librarian, like I salute you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that is yeah. is that like a Hufflepuff? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Looking at it now. Yeah. Worlds are colliding. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> cross cross the streams, which is in fact now is crossing the streams. Okay. So uh when I first <laughs> Uh, what, what I want to ask what everybody's uh, sort of expectation for the this this Amazon series, which we've only heard about, I think, for like a year or two. I, I can't. Well, time means nothing now, so I don't know. But uh, I, I don't remember hearing about this for a very long time. Amazon, of course, gobbling up properties like everybody else's, and Wheel of Time has a lot to uh, work on. If it if it lands, if the series does well, it they've got seasons worth of stuff to go through. So what were your expectations or what are your expectations 
for this sh show? Uh, I'm going to answer that first because I feel like I have to back up my little admission. Um, I, too, was recommended this book quite often uh, in high school uh, by people who said this is a great book. And, you know, they probably even try to lend me copies don't have you. And I really did think I had read the first issue, the first issue, the first book. Um, and it's possible I did. And like everyone else here, forgot most of the elements of it. But while I was watching the show, I had no clue. Uh, so here's where I admit my privilege. Didn't realize it was such a female centric storyline in, 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 a, in many respects. And now that I think back of the people who recommended this, guess who they were most of the time. It was most of my, my, my girl pals, right? People who are into fantasy and are also women who were saying, trying to tell me, Frank, this story is different. And I was going, yeah, yeah, it's different. It's good. Yeah, the dragons here are cooler. Or whatever. Are the elves taller? What's what's going on with this one? <laughs> Didn't get it for like 20 years until I'm sitting there watching episode one going, oh, that's why they wanted me to read the book. So yeah, I, I had apparently no expectations for this show. I just wanted a good uh, fantasy romp. Anybody else? What, what what about you folks? What were you hoping for? Lauren, you were into this for quite a while. Uh, what were you hoping out of this series? Um, I am interested in the magic. Uh, it's it's completely different than, um, well, I wouldn't say completely different, but it is a different um, idea and concept of how people uh, deal with magic and uh that's what and 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 the the type of things that they can do with the power um i am very looking forward to that um in the shows it was it was kind of weird to see for the first time i'm like oh okay this is this is kind of kind of cheesy looking but i'm like but no 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 it's it it makes sense and I I kind of I was okay with it. I was like, okay, I, I think I can handle this. It makes it makes sense the way that they did it for me at least, it, even though it's still a little. There was a lot of like force blasting and yeah. including like yeah. wind lasers at <laughs> things that but conceptually though the the theories of what they're playing with is pretty. I would say maybe unique at the time or or rare at the time and probably better executed now in many books but uh yeah i could see that i could see why you would be interested in that uh judd how about you what were you what are you hoping um, for so i i'm of two minds uh after watching the three episodes and then watching them again for, to, to kind of prep up for this um, on one hand i just kind of want some wonderment i just want to see some cool shit that i remember from when i was 14. like i i would really just like to see some cool shit so there, there is definitely that aspect of it and then there is also the aspect of I would really like the concept of the gender binary that this cosmology just just has right down to its core to be really blown up and and to to kind of annihilate that in a way that that still works still makes the cosmology work but says like yeah that that thing where we we divvy it up between two parts that's an artifice like that's 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 a human creation and yeah. and and we've made that and the, it, i i want them to tr i yeah i i uh, yeah i just want that and i i i i'm i'm nervous that this could become like a real you know it's funny we should bring hogwarts and hufflepuff into it so early because i think it could really become a rowling turf rallying point and Ooh. i would love to see it be like just an abyss of misery for those folks so uh <laughs> there's that so there's like the 14 year old me who just wants to see cool shit like show me more shadar logo type stuff that just makes me feel like i'm 14 again and mm -hmm. then there's the adult me who's like and politically i want to eviscerate my enemies and i yeah. want to i want to use i want to see this just destroy people who are shitty to other people so there's that yeah i think i i don't see how you can't do both you would have to get both Right. right for it to be really impactful it has right. to be awesome looking right it has to be like a yeah. story everybody wants to watch this everybody's talking about it yep. and oh as a side effect it's just like let's spin this up and the thing is i knowing nothing about how the, the the series goes my my expectation in 2021 watching the first three episodes was well this can't 
this can't be accurate. This this right. the mythology they're building up for the way uh, power works and is engendered. It can't be accurate. But these books were published more than thirty years ago, right? So maybe it maybe it is accurate. I don't know, and we'll I guess we'll find out. Yeah, uh, Natty, big shoes, yeah. Bill. What are you expecting? So, uh, uh, real quick, a couple of things, Judd, that you mentioned um, that I was impressed with with the show was the diversity of the cast. Oh yeah, it's amazing. Uh, because when you read, you know, when you read the books, these are all just white people, and yep. you know, it, and not a lot. I mean, Rand had red hair. Basically, was that was his defining, uh, and the uh, you know, then you go to all the different places, and there's different. I think races that come in with the sea folk and all that stuff. Um, There's sea folk. No. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. But I, so I was, I was, I was very impressed with that. I made the mistake after uh, watching the show, knowing that we were going to speak of reading way too many articles. And when I say articles, a lot of them are really just, blog posts on sites that have ads that are paying for it of very mm -hmm. angry people angry at the diversity angry at some of the things that they added into the story which i didn't i was i i understood what they were serving this how they served the story um but i think coming into it and Judd, again, what you were saying about there being some real problematic things with the initial story, especially. I used to read a lot of Piers Anthony books Oof. and those are horrible. Yeah. Like, like, like those were my like growing up, like I would be like eight, nine, ten and just just pouring through these things, not even knowing what I was reading. Yep. But I still have these books and I. I a few years ago I had a long commute and I was just like, oh, I'll just read these books I've already got. I don't remember them. And I'm reading and I'm just like, wow, how am I not the worst misogynist like ever? Like this, these are terrible books to read. Yeah. And, and so the Jordan stuff, bad, <laughs> not as bad. And so I'm hope, like, but I'm, I think it's going to be so difficult for them to break the, kind of the binary of right. that that's been established because it's so core anyway what did i expect from this <laughs> uh nothing i i i i saw whispers that there was a show years ago that some company had the rights to it and it made uh, a pilot and I remember that. You're right. Yeah. It was it a was, really weird pilot that they just Yeah, and I, I saw I don't know if I saw the whole thing or if like a, a an 8 minute snippet of it or whatever and it was really terrible. Like such low production and uh kind of I had it in my head that and you know I'd read read things that would say it was unfilmable. And I was like, "Well, okay, well the scope of it, I really I don't know how they would it, do it, this." She big. She it's big. huge. <laughs> yeah. And there's a bajillion locations and characters. And, you know, it's not a thing where, like, you would go to one place and you could spend a whole season there. Like, because they're all there. It, you're jumping everywhere. And I was just like, this, they can't do this. And, but then I saw that, you know, Amazon had bought it. And I was like, all right, they want to, they want to, uh, let Game Bezos put say. some billions into this. Yeah. He's going to yeah. space. Screw him. He's going to space. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he's going to make my dreams. Go. And like I'm living in a world where I'm seeing all of like growing up in a comic book store, all of my dreams from growing up are yeah. on like they're happening. Yeah. And in, in ways that I never ex and they're dominating pop culture. Yeah. In ways that I never and like what? I'm going to see a Moon Knight show here pretty soon. Yeah. Like what? And, uh, so then yeah. I kind of was just like, all right, maybe this can happen. Yep. And then and then and then I watched it. And we the, can get to that. There was a moment where I knew that our subculture had had been totally mainstream when my cousin, who was an actor in New York City, was talking about another actor. And she was like, Yeah, I mean, he was on Broadway, but he got offered Professor X, and you just can't turn that down. So I mean, of course he went for it. And 
I was like, I can't believe that sentence exists. Like, I can't believe that an actor, like a professional actor can look at someone else and say that sentence and it actually means something. Like you, you all know who Professor X is. You know what a danger yeah. room is. Like you, you. Uh, it's the just meta wild. context yeah. of that. It's not just take the role. Obviously, yeah. it's that another actor would be like, yeah, oh, obviously you would take that role. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, a good friend of mine, Jesse Barufi, says that uh, geek cult. The fact that geek culture won the culture war is a uh, is a monkey's paw wish come true. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, all right. Yeah. Because of all these articles Natty was talking about, you're like, every every hot take is a unqualified mess. It's just people just spitting out whatever they think will get, I guess, clicks maybe if we're if we're fortunate. That's what that's all about. I, yeah. Yeah. Rage clicks. I, it's, it's all I can figure. Yeah, like, hopefully. I was reading a lot of stuff and I was just like, why are you so angry? Like, yeah. You get to watch your stuff. It might not be exactly what you have in your brain, but that's not how the world works. Like right. it's neat. But right. also, I, I think in the books they talk about the people in Eamon's Field being darker hair, darker skin. That's why Rand stood out. So it's not like they're going against what's in the books. Like that's right. that's in the books. Right. Um, you just gotta. And I could almost give people a pass on the the question of gender and magic in this world, because that's kind of core to the to the way the this book is dealing with it. Right. That's just I, I'll put a pin on why I give them a pass for a, in a moment. But like when questions about what a character's appearance looks like and we're on the scale of of what race they would appear as it, it's unlikely this book had core to its or the series of books core to its values was this character has to look white you got you don't understand forget about anything yeah. else that's going on in the plot this character has to look really white you know i doubt that's the way uh robert jordan had written it but it's apparently the way they appears in many people's minds in terms of the way uh genders uh played out in this in this it's in a way, I feel almost sorry for the the books that have come before because they they don't have a choice but to be written in the time that they were written, and in and this is sort of why I don't like that so much of geek culture is based on IP because I would like to see the further adventures in this world, new stories that could happen in the Wheel of Time that can maybe re-examine some of the stuff we've already established. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you could do that without actually laying out the groundwork first. Real time is not as ubiquitous as, let's say, I don't know, Lord of the Rings or, or Harry Potter or whatever, where it had a recent you know, play in pop culture. Mm -hmm. So I get that they need to put the groundwork down, but eventually, hopefully, they'll be able to iterate and spin off of it. Uh, let's talk about the, the the three episodes now that we've gotten about 20 minutes into this. Uh, I All I'm going to say for the first episode is that I, I, I did not... It was a hard watch for me. I did not expect what I was watching at all, and that kind of threw me for a loop. I spent a decent amount of that time questioning why I ignored this series for so long that, again, so many female fans of the genre were urging me to read um but mostly it was it was a lot of fanta crap right there was a lot of stuff to follow and and this sounds ridiculous it sounds like when like an old man talking to you about your hobbies like i don't know what that that dungeons and whatever thing you play is yeah. i could not follow it, it made, i i left it with a renewed interest a respect for Peter Jackson, uh, maybe not mm. the the, uh, the Hobbit, but like the Lord of the Rings. In a few moments in the very beginning of the first Fellowship movie, you're like, "Oh, this is homey and this is nice, and there's a magical world, and there, there was a war, and it was fought, and now something's happening." And it catches you up really quickly. And I don't, I didn't find the artistry in that first episode at all. So it was a everything went over my head. As three people who knew the story somewhat, uh, what did you think? Am I uh, was I alone in that? Oh, I, for, you, you go, Lauren. You go. You go. <laughs> uh, for me, it was just a reminder because it had been so long since I had read them, and I'm like, oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, it, so there is a lot, but there's so much more. <laughs> um, uh, I and knew it. yeah, and uh, what the way that I. Uh, 
would look at the books. I would I would read a book and I'd be like, okay, what's the one big thing that happened? Because a whole lot happened, but what's the one big thing? Okay, that happened. And then I had to go to the next book. Oh, okay, what's the one big thing that happened in that one? So I, that's what I, I feel like this the show is like too. Like, okay, what happened? They got attacked. Okay, that's it. And then everything else is is the, important, but there's one big important thing that happened. And the that's TV like, guide summary, the little yeah, thing. This is this yeah. is the one where they they meet each other. This is the one where they yeah. all get attacked by Trollocs, which is a horrible name for a monster. I'm sorry. Trollocs. <laughs> the whole time I was like, what? 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 But How that's exactly what I you. saw in my head. You really? Way, yeah, I thought they mm -hmm. looked great. They yeah. looked. Yeah, they did. Like, they were pretty graphic. And they were, I don't know if you. Uh, we'll get this reference, but so there were the stand up big faced horn guys, but they were also kind of like uh, but yeah, they were kind of well, no, they were like uh, berry, like a bear, not a berry, but bear ish creatures with dark fur that were kind of loping along on all mm -hmm. fours, yeah. And they reminded me so much of the um, March of the Wooden Soldier. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, they're not at all, but in my mind, that's I was just like, Oh, I like, know you, exactly what you're talking about. Those things, nightmare fuel, they're it, the it, most yeah. terrifying. And they it, show that on, like, I think, is it Thanksgiving? Like, is it yeah, tomorrow? It's, it's gonna be, we're recording this Thanksgiving Eve, which I didn't realize was and, a thing, but yes, it, you'll yeah, be it, watching it, this. It, it, it'll be on the TV. And I remember my children walking by and going, like, no, no, Dad, no. <laughs> like Those we don't troll things from from uh, Babes in Toyland, March of the Wooden Shoulder, whatever, uh, were terrifying, almost as terrifying as uh, I believe it was Felix the Cat, or maybe Tom or Jerry. There's a cat and a mouse in that. Watch it. Uh, this is, oh, uh, there's a cat and a mouse in this. There's like it's a guy in a costume, and then like a maybe a. A monk. I think it's a monkey in a costume for a mouse. I like it's I, ridiculous. Yeah. I, I'm now. I seem completely insane. We've gone off topic. <laughs> uh, yes. So I'm really excited to hear that you. Th this was close to the what you pictured in your head. Uh, I I wanted. There are a couple things I wanted to look cooler. I've got to admit. I, I thought I liked Moraine's outfit. I thought a lot of the clothes of the villagers looked a little larpy. Like sometimes I was like, I yes. kind of, it kind of looks like, like a Ren Fair. It kind of, yeah. yeah, it kind of, yeah, totally Ren Fair, Larb, absolutely. And, and I wanted, this is going to sound really corny, but I'll, I'm going to go with it. I wanted the swords to look cooler. Like they're just kind of katana. It's like they're, they're like, it just looked like the swords that people use when they like run into a 7 Eleven because they have a drug problem and like, right. they, they, they want to yeah. like hold the place up. And and I was just like, it's just a katana with a heron on it, really. Like heron. that's that. that <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited about the heron. The heron. I'm I mean, totally excited. Oh, that the heron has meaning, oh, Frank. Do not oh, miss the heron. Oh my god. Yeah, uh, the, the yeah. heron blade is a big deal, and the yeah, fact yeah, that his dad like heron randomly yeah. has one. You totally. nerds, I love this. Yeah. I love being uh, overwhelmed by I, nerds. I wanted I the heron it. mark blades to look cooler because because Lan has one and Rand has one because of his dad. And when they took them out, I was like. Y'all just oh. went with just straight katana, huh? Like that's mm, it? Yeah. Like no nothing. Like not even a cool handle. Like it's like, just like crawl or whatever. No, uh no. What was there was some crawl had a pretty cool one. But I think Maybe, it's it's yeah. based on the I think it's based on the people who are holding them. I think probably the well, spoilers, but there are other people who have the heron blades who are a bit more showy. Maybe. So if you look at Tam and, the, and Lan. Okay. He was hiding who he okay. Uh, that's interesting. All right. So All it's right. This I love this. I love having geeks overwhelm they, me by the they, they, this. They should they don't have swords. So I mean just the fact well, that they had swords were so were a big deal. It's it's also this is also reminding me of my childhood, I like being around people who were talking about something that I didn't really understand. And I'd be like, Yeah, that's this is exciting. Uh-huh. This is my first experience. This was my <laughs> intro to D D where I was like, Yeah, I watched that cartoon game. What are you? Yeah, okay. What's a this? game? There's a game involved in this cartoon. All right, but yeah, like I, so little pieces like the heron blade. I, the person, the people I'm thinking of, the the my friends who had told me about this book series went on. We would play D and D together, and they had a heron blade. I, I, I drew heron no, on my in my no notebook. context for what that was about, and now I know. Wow! Look at that. That's so fun. 
Oh yeah. man, um, it's like a twenty-year-old dot dot got connected. <laughs> so I think I, I I'm I like to I guess tie things. So yeah, what you said, Frank, when I was just kind of of the same. I don't know if it's Frank, but th- there was no subtlety or artistry, but behind the explaining of things. Yeah, like. I read the stuff and I'm watching it. And so I had just finished with watching Fargo and like the season, the last season of it on, and this it's completely different, obviously, but like just the way it's shot and the way the, the, the frames that they use and the way they push the story with how they frame things. Um, I didn't feel like there was that level of cinematic artistry, artistry to this. Yeah. And, it it felt kind of like LARPing, like you said, like it felt a little CW to me. Mm. And I well could tell they had a lot of money because it was gorgeous. Like the the uh, environments they were in and they spent money on the sets. Um, but it just it felt like I don't it just the, the visual storytelling and the pacing and mm-hmm. the cuts, the edits and everything. I was just like, man, they're so close to having a really cool show here. Yeah. But like, there was like a lot of emotional like drops that are supposed to impact you or affect you. And maybe they'll come up later in the show or the seasons, but they were just like, this happened, this happened, this happened. You're like, well, I don't, I don't feel anything. You're going too fast for me. I felt, I felt like that in the book really. Oh, Mm. I, cause you meet all these people and there's so many people yeah. and it's just like, okay, so I, why should I care? Yeah. And it's not until book three or four <laughs> where you really God. care. Yeah. yeah. And the, yeah. And the book um, is worse actually because it, it starts like a thousand years before. It does. Like, I just, does it? Yeah. I yeah. The book, that. the book starts the with like the dragon breaking the world. Yeah. So oh. You're like in a palace that you don't know that you're never going to see yeah. again, seeing a guy who you're never going to see again. Is it loose, the the loose Theron? And, or? Yeah, uh, yeah, and then loose and then you see, and then you flash forward to Emmons Field, and you're supposed to care. Uh, so, like, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Lauren, you go. Oh no, oh. no, I, 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 I agree with that, and I think when you get to um, Camlin and spoilers, um, when you get to to other areas, uh, we have an annoying graphic for that. Hold on, <laughs> so we made this a while ago. There oh no! No, there's a thing. <laughs> that doesn't matter. This whole thing. We're just talking about the, the first three episodes. We're not. We're not. Gonna, you're not going to remember it anyways. Don't worry exactly. about it. <laughs> I think there's a whole lot. They have to introduce everyone, and I think the they're gonna. It's gonna take a whole season just to introduce the important p- people. Mm. Really, any time uh, an adaptation happens, you are an artist putting your fingers on a work, and no matter what, you're gonna have to make this your own right there's no way yeah. of you're not gonna it's not a live stream of someone reading the book to you so um, the fact well, that they take some liberties with it i think is gotta gotta yeah. work in their favor yeah yeah and i think when you said peter jackson what he, i think what he did with the lord of the rings was so stunning like he took this massive thing and was able to adapt it to the movie screen in a way that i thought was just so wonderful but then it's so funny because then he did the Hobbit and I thought he really blew it. Like yeah. by using it, the same formula. Yeah. Incredibly. Like, yeah. yeah. Same formula. It, it, and it, it didn't but I work. think but, the Hobbit, you're dealing with one book, one kid's book yeah. that he added to, whereas Lord of the Rings, you know, there's, there's just so much more there yeah. that you can work but, with. And, and I, I, I think he really, I think what Peter Jackson did really well is he was like, these are the themes we're going to work with. And, and every scene is going to be about this. And so yeah. you got this thing where, where when the, when the ring was in a scene, it was bigger than everything else. And when it fell to the ground, you heard this thunk and like that had meaning. Whereas, yeah. whereas uh, in the Hobbit, all themes were off. And there was even one scene. I remember seeing someone on uh, a YouTube video where they, they play dramatic music when the dwarves are doing something and it's actually the old ring wraith music 
that from from Lord of the Rings. And I was like, oh, oh what a gaffe. Like, yeah, what a what a mistake. And and so anyway, and I, I think I mean, we're looking, you know, we, we just talked about how many words this damn thing is. I, I think it's hard. You, you can't look at something with four million four hundred and ten thousand words and be like, all right, these are the themes. Like, it's very difficult. I'm not saying you can't. Yeah. I'm saying it's much more difficult to look at four million words and be like, all right, these are the themes we're going to tease out. And that's why these scenes are going to look this way and that way. Because right. and Unless you're doing what Lauren suggested or what Lauren does when, when she read it, which is this book is about this thing. Yeah. And then maybe yeah. you can do it. But then, right. you know, it. I, I don't, it feels to me that Robert Jordan wrote these almost like, um, I was gonna say romance novels, maybe a little bit romance novel, maybe a little bit like um, like serialized fiction, where like it, the push really was get the next book, story continues yeah. in the next book, as opposed yeah. to Lord of the Rings, which I mean arbitrarily was three books because the publisher was like, what the hell, right? <laughs> this is too big for one. We're gonna do this as three. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I mean it's all different things, and uh, and I, I actually think... kind of enjoyed the fact that perhaps the director of these of this first episode wasn't necessarily to blame as much as the source material may have been to blame for why it wasn't as majestic and 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 clearly thrown together. Lauren, you said I think. Oh, I it was just um I think Robert Jordan had the idea of making 13 books. I think that was and so he just he knew that he he had a lot to go through. Yeah, he was like <laughs> I, could, I could do this. Okay. Yeah, and out of out of those millions of words you're talking about so much of it was about the lace on the the bodice, 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 bodice. bodice. I don't know, bodice. Sure, bodice. and uh, or or uh, and I, I don't. This is not a spoiler at all, but uh, and I'm going to say your name wrong because I'm really been introduced to how wrong I've been saying all these words all my life. Yes. But n n nine nine of Eve, right? Nine Eve, nine Eve, nine Eve, nine Eve. Yeah. Uh, but her, one of her main character traits in all these books is that she will yank her uh, um, braid. And I remember, Judd, to your point about just terrible depictions of women. Oh, it was yeah. like sh she'd go off in a huff and pull her braid at land. And I was just like, that's weird. Why are we doing that? <laughs> and I, I, know I, I love the, so the, oh, the, so, some, some things about the first episode that I really liked. Yes. Nynaeve as this strong black woman fucking rocked my world. Like, I was just like, yes, like let, more of that, please. Uh, and I, I, I love that depiction of Nynaeve. Uh, I, I think the actor who's doing it is rocking it. Um, and I really liked the, the women's circle test that Aguin goes through. And, and I mean, if you've got to show a metaphor for someone submitting to something greater than them, what an awesome, like, I don't know if it went full, like, wow, you made this feminist, but you, you, you did a damn good, you gave it a good shot. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, I just thought it was really interesting and, and really cool. She washes up on shore and walks back into the bar and drinks with the ladies. And I liked it. I was, I was down oh, yeah. with it. I, Especially I, when, when her dad comes up to her yeah. and I, I just rewatched to this work. tonight and yeah. it was the, 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 just, the emotional connection of the actors was very weird, but like she walks in and this guy comes up and you're like, Oh, who's this? And, and I don't know if they overdubbed it, but something about how he's like my girl or something like that. Like less hands means less money in pints. And then the drunk woman comes over and grabs her and it's just like, she's drinking with us tonight. And it was just like, Oh yeah, yeah. it was, it was, it was nice. Yeah. I like that. I like that aspect of it. I, I, Anyway, the, the first episode wasn't, I, I didn't feel like it was as strong as the next two, but, uh, you know, I pushed play and I kept going. <laughs> so I, I don't, whatever that, for that, or that's worth. And I think, you know, smart move by releasing the first three episodes. I know it's not necessarily super atypical, but this is a big story. And if your first yeah. episode is just a bunch of like, this is the world and the way it was and the dragon that broke the world and the thing happened and I'm like, <laughs> Uh, I am I am your bread and butter, and I'm not following this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm as geek as you could get. I'm, I'm your like, target oh. audience. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. But yeah, the next two episodes really had uh, a lot of good moments to them. A very strong open for the second episode. Uh, and I, I, 
I like that they they are doing a wonderful job of, and my notes are kind of all over the place because I've watched them all at once, but I think they do a wonderful job of keeping the mystery of who this person is, who this reincarnated Messiah slash Antichrist, this bad news bear that's sort of <laughs> around there. Uh, and I, I, I love it. I, I think they did. That is where there's a lot of artistry in keeping the, who it, who it is and who, who could be the bad person or the the you know the, the well the so since you don't person. know the story do you have a guess as to who the dragon reborn could be <gasps> ah all right mm. so this this would require me to remember people's names so the the candidates are rand who i know as the, the i think my wife said like well he's the white guy so he's probably gonna be him <laughs> so for for rand really quick did yeah. anybody else get a real uh, Hayden Christensen vibe yes. from him? Yes, Hayden Christensen and um, oh, what's the other one? We were we were discussing that. Oh, oh man, I forget who else. If you, if it occurs, yeah, you just blur that out. Yeah. So there's Rand, who you know definitely is the mold of the hero for for this. There's Egwene, who um, just recently came into her powers. Right, that makes sense. Matt, who's probably the underdog because he's, uh, you know, on the verge of being uh, what like his father, a jerk. Like, I don't know, it wasn't a jerk, it was effectively a jerk like his father. And then there's Perrin, who um, is all I know from him so far is that he is. Uh, he seems like well, he's experienced the most trauma that he can, sh you know, show to everyone else. Like it, it is legitimate trauma from have like, accidentally killing his wife, um, which I've heard isn't actually in the book. And this is a much more interesting way yeah. of doing it. Not in the book. Yeah. I don't. I, I I was confused. Uh, I, yeah. Of I, those I, of those four, just to quickly answer the question, I I I want it to be Matt. I want it to be Matt, even though I don't think it's going to be Matt. I, the answer, I think it's going to be Perrin. Because I want to say that it's Rand, but I feel like that's that's got to be the MacGuffin. So it's going to be the, the next person over. So I so I think the story will say it's Perrin, but uh, I want it to be Matt because Matt is interesting. Because as much of a bad guy as he is, he's just trying to look out for his sisters. And that's nice. Um, so the actor who plays him. Matt, I enjoy tremendously. He's uh, not in the I think, season. but he's not in the second season. Yeah. He's 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 just something about him. The first episode I didn't really, but then like the more Matt I saw, I was just like, okay, yeah, that's Matt. Yeah, yeah, same. And I think same. I yeah, think Perrin is good. Perrin is also very Perrin. Yeah, to me and yeah. McGuire and. Yeah, even Rand. I mean, I think they did a pretty good job with the casting for the main. Um, Agreed. Main when they core. pulled that cast out of their episode one es es expository setting, it was interesting to see them interact with each other. They definitely yeah. feel like they have history. Uh, even characters that just show up for a moment, the the woman in the bar who uh, su attempts to seduce Rand. Like she actually does seem like they, she seems complex for a person who just is in league yeah. with the villains. Yeah, uh, yeah. So far, because in the know. book she has about twenty pages to to discuss like the whole scene. So oh, really, that's I mean, great. Well, that, see, I, 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 I don't that's remember her from the book. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. I remember. Her. I remember oh, cool. her from the book. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's cool that the, the, these actors do have a lot of reference material to go through. Yeah. I, yeah. I I feel like the, the show got me. Like, I was like, oh, shit. Okay, I'm watching this now no matter what. Was when they went into Shadar Lagoff, and I was like, I was a 13-year-old kid again. I totally was. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. I I am watching every episode. Absolutely. Uh, I, I feel like a kid again. Like, it's something about heading back in there and the Trollocs like refusing to go in and, and, yeah. and, and telling the story. And I, I really loved that. And, and like in the second episode, it was that moment uh, of like, don't touch anything. And of course someone's going to touch something. And then uh, w when they were singing the song and, and, and Oh, the song Moraine, was great. Yeah. I liked the, I liked yeah. it. And Maureen kind of gave the history behind it. And I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. That's a pretty good info dump. Good, yeah. good job, much, folks. Much better job at an info dump there. Yeah, right? yeah. And, yeah, and, and yeah. The, I, it's yeah. I think the, in the second 
episode, they they kind of started to figure that out. And yeah, yeah, like I think that's something that Robert Jordan really did that Tolkien kind of did, but like there's so much it's steeped in so much history, everything. And so you see uh Shadow Logoth and you're like and then you get the little background story, but you go inside and yeah, me too. That's where it was like it felt like it was shot a little bit differently. It looked a little bit different. It didn't look mm-hmm. like you were just in backlot woods almost. And I was right. just like, oh, oh, ooh, ee, yeah. yeah, yeah. They they had something to say all of a sudden. It was like, oh yeah, this is a place where selfishness destroyed their you know uh, the greatest city in the world. And and yeah. Uh, yeah, we can we can understand that. I think right now. <laughs> so yeah, and, it was. And, and, and you started right. to see a real scale of the world. Yes. Right, like it pretty quickly was just like expanded this world like massively. I thought my my favorite part of the books was uh, when he talked about the world before the breaking, mm. you know, and, and there's there's a whole lot of it, but when when that was mentioned, I just couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. So if yeah. there was a show that that was would ever be created, it, I would want it to be. Yeah. Before the breaking. And oh, because yeah. it is it is one hundred percent different than what the world is yeah. now. And yeah. I, I'm that, excited yeah. to see that because yeah. it is Same. it was technologically like the the advancement was like on par with like what we have today almost. It was right. just yeah. Spoiler ish. Isn't that but, what um, uh, isn't it, that what it, Game of Thrones is doing? Where like I was about to say, yeah, um, like well, I feel like if this hits and they get in it, however many seasons out of it, that that would be the next maybe logical iteration. Yeah, would. I think I think Lauren's uh, hope is what a lot of Amazon executives are hoping, <laughs> right. right? That this yeah. does well how enough many, where they were going to get a prequel series, and then right. really, how many you know, seasons will it take to get through the books that they, that are already there? Oh my that, god! Well, it really just has to prove that it's a hit. Yeah. More, I'm mean, just get way out. But uh, <laughs> and then that in that area, that's when you can really stretch your legs with things that Judd had brought up earlier about uh, exploring this dynamic that may just be or probably is just artifice uh, in even in their own world. Uh, and that would be fascinating to look yeah, at it and yeah. be like, no, this whole thing was just uh, it was always in your heads and it was yeah. always in your culture. Um, which is honestly, I gotta be honest, where I my 2021 brain assumed this was going. I assumed it was going at one point. We're gonna find out that none of this is based on reality. I mean, and and maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it is. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, I think you know we've talked for quite a while now. Uh, it had a, a a weak, maybe a little weak opening, but I think we are pretty well united on that the, the the last two episodes were pretty impressive are there any moments any other moments that maybe we didn't touch upon that so, really sung out to you lauren yeah i i want to get your opinion on the um the red aja hunting the the male magic user uh oh. or power user just because knowing what i know I thought that that was a good way for them to yeah. kind of broach yeah. the subject of of that because there's a whole lot there, um, yeah. and that's basically the whole story. Um, so it, it was it was I liked how they did that. Yeah, I I I loved that they had like this unreliable narrator where like there's a guy next to him and you're like oh there's a guy next to him and he turns out not to yeah. be real. Uh, that was a really cool you know, again, you know, a reveal, a really cool reveal, a really nice choice. And, and I hope we get a lot more of that as, I, yeah. as things, as things soup up. Yeah. My, yeah. I think my only issue with it, with it was its positioning in the story. Cause it was very much like, Oh, who are these people? I, I will not see them again for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at all. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty and- way of in, instantaneously establishing that uh, I did not know why people were recommending this story for me for so long. <laughs> That's what it did for me. Uh, what else did you say? Well, for you... me, well, just when I saw the men and they were running, and I'm like, oh, that's a weird outfit for them to wear. Uh, that kind of yeah. It was. <laughs> it was like, oh, I don't, I don't know how that works, but okay, okay, maybe, 
maybe they look like Viking dirty men. Yeah, like the beard and stuff. <laughs> it was, and it, it was I, they, weird. Yeah. That took me out of the story, uh, those guys. And I mean, I, I keep complaining about the look, but like now that things are being shot on digital, you get that thing where everything is so crisp, like mm. that the background is in as in focus as the people. And it looks a little cheap if it's not messed with a little bit or something. And um, like uh, if you watch Legion, that was another show where they would, mess with the colors of sky or whatever like and it just gave it a visual depth that i was i'm gonna keep complaining about that it was like this was a little flat it, it seemed yeah. as if this was i i think the cw effect is like it is pretty accurate where like it feels like this was shot on budget in a short amount of time they did a good job with wardrobe but yeah and but maybe it came from one closet yeah you know it, but this is season more. one and they probably had this budget they want to see how it, they're already working on season two so maybe like i mean they're gonna i think they'll figure this stuff out is my hope and covid i don't know and covid i wonder how much yeah. of that yeah yeah that's yeah, interesting they were they, they were they, shooting they in a bubble we're working yeah. on it before but who knows they probably just put it out there so you're you're <laughs> talking about the red ajas uh lauren now how about the white cloaks I, I'm glad that came up. So for yeah. me, uh, Amon, is it Amon Valda? Uh, oh. Am I pronouncing it right? The person who uh, is hunting the... Uh, oh, he the was questioner? a great actor. The questioner. Yes. Yeah. Abdul Salas. Uh, I'm calling him out by name because like the perfect mixture of intimidating, creepy, but not uh, cartoonish, right? Yeah. Th this yeah, yeah, seemed yeah. like a person who would exist in this world and has great motivation for the the terrible things that they are doing uh which i'm auto completing in my mind i'm like all right why would you be a questioner in this world why would you be a man who does not have magical powers who goes out and tracks down and hunts women who do and what what could this mean about so all the stuff in the background of the world is just flooding forward and if this were a role-playing game i'd be like we'd be playing out what this actually means fortunately yeah. this has already been written so we're just gonna find <laughs> out what it means and how much of this is accurate but just a wonderful portrayal for me yeah he had a gravity to it mm. just like the way he delivered his lines and i was just like oh okay here we are yeah i um in the previews i saw him and i'm like oh Who's a guy wearing white? Like I completely forgot about white cloaks because they were uh, like they were so awful in my head, and just like I tried to push them out because they were negative, and I just I guess I completely forgot about them. And then I saw the show, and I'm like, oh yeah, oh no, <laughs> remember them and yeah. Yeah. everything I, that they do, and and they're um, they're. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. No, right. no. Uh, I, I feel like we've got like Chekhov's white cloak. It's just, it's so bleached clean that I feel like the director who eventually is like, and then there's a smudge of blood across it. Oh, it's man. just going to be this, it's just going to be this ridiculously uh, overwrought metaphor. Like whatever it is, it is going to, I hope it lands, whatever, like whatever it is, I hope yeah. it lands and lands well because they, they clearly have gone so out of their way to make those cloaks so very white that it must oh, have yeah. been hell to shoot for that right right uh or a lot of post-production uh in the great villain checklist uh of things you want to do to to show that your 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 villain is a villain um or at least your scary guy is a scary guy not necessarily a villain uh, have them eat a full bird <laughs> <laughs> always works and that was always very confusing works. at first i was just like what is happening and then he said <laughs> i was just like Oh no! Why did he eat him? Oh no! I don't. I can't even remember where the other times I've seen it, but I know I've seen it where people are like, "Oh, this is a delicacy. You eat the full bird, and you must cover your mouth so that God cannot see you." Because it's in it's in something, and I'm like, "This is a this is a power move. I'm going to do this at the next office meeting <laughs> where we where people take off their masks for lunch. I'm going to be like, "All right, full bird. That's it. I'm doing it." How, how do you think? Uh... Uh, Minus would take that. He's he he is he's done the full bird. Hey, I feel <laughs> it's like a rotisserie chicken. He's just like oh, I'm just he's gonna a eat full that. bird. He's a full bird. 
Um, uh, yeah. What I was going to say is, so we're three episodes in, and I think the White Cloaks is, we you have all the, the kids from Emmons Field, you have the Aes Sedai, you have the Red and the Blue, you have these White Cloaks, you have the men who can channel, you have the Trollocs. Yeah, the uh, Voldemort. Eyeless, I guess. They're, yeah. I forget what, what they're called. Mydral. And what is it? Mydral. Okay, and and then whatever uh, was it? Uh, Shadow logo, the, the little shadow we saw. But like already three episodes in, that's oh a God. lot of people to introduce. Or like, there's so much more, they're, and there's so not much even more. Yeah. Oh, the bard, no, the bard character, the Gleeman. Oh, Tom Merlin. Tom. We could yeah, probably do an episode on that. Yeah, he's wonderful. Mm. I, I thought did the enjoy patches him. were on the outside. I, I got really confused. I'm like, where are the patches? And then he opened his cloak, and I'm like, oh, there they are. I'm like, oh no, that's I know if I like it on the on the inside. So like, I'm <laughs> loving this vicariously when you for people who did truly love the the series and they seeing all these little things that are, that are like, oh, this is bringing me back. That's awesome. None of this works for me. Like none of it carries me yeah. anywhere. When they go, They're, I can't even remember the city. Whatever the dark, the the ghost city. I, we said the, the name of it a minute ago, and I lost it. Yeah. So the only thing I thought of was like, oh, that's like that place from Lord of the Rings where the ghosts are, and they're gonna recruit the ghosts. What's so gonna? So it's weird how like it latches on to in the absence of actual um, canon and text, it latches on to things that that either it was inspired by or inspired it. So I'm like, oh, I think I know what's going to happen well, here. Frank, of, of, course, of, course you, of course you speak like Robert Jordan's old tongue. So you'll just remember that Shadow Logoth means shadow waiting in the old tongue. And that way you'll you'll, you'll never forget now. There you go. Yeah, simple. now I got it. Simple shadow way. waiting. Simple yeah. mnemonic. Like, oh my like, goodness, that's what? smart. Uh, there is, uh, Amazon has published apparently on, on online a um, glossary of terms and things oh, you really? need to know to understand this. Uh, so like any good source, it has a terrible in, a terrible index. You just can't follow it. You don't know where anything is going. So, uh, but yeah, it, check that out on their website and I'm sure it'll help. Uh, I think, you know, we, we've talked for about an hour now. We should probably wrap up our thoughts on this. Um, uh, aside from my biggest complaint, which is that the Gleeman, uh, had huge shoes to follow with The Witcher and its successful song, uh, Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. The, the music in this was not as catchy. Um, aside from that, I actually did really enjoy the three episodes. I, I felt like I was missing something, uh, some kind of context, uh, which was, of course, the 14 books that came before it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I would... I would not read. I would uh, obviously it's impossible to read fourteen books before the next episode. But I don't think I would even bother. I think leave that for the people who enjoy it that way. And I'm glad some people who are fans of the series are are fans of the 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 live action show. But enjoy this for what it is. Hopefully it'll be a fun run. And you know, get your fantasy fix uh, uh, streaming. I, I I would definitely recommend this. I'm I'm going to keep watching for at least a few more episodes. Uh, what about you, Natty? Uh, it has me. I'm 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 here. I'm here for it. Um, you know, I I love the world building. I love the little touches that are stuck. And I forgot to mention when I was listing all those people. The is it I I Aiel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I didn't pick up on and the like when yeah when they went by oh yeah and the tinkers yeah and the geez yeah, yeah I forgot tinkers. about them. And there's wolves, but when oh. they were, you know, when when they Tom cut the guy out of the the cage and stuff, I didn't pick up on what that was until he mentioned it. And then I was looking at the body, and I was like, oh, he's actually like longer arms or legs or something. Like they 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 did kind of mess around with stuff. Um, and so oh. yeah, I'm yeah. I'm so yeah. much flew over my there's, head. I, I don't even know the things that flew over my head. I love yeah, this. No, you don't even know the stuff that you don't, that that you don't know. Yeah. Um, wow. So yeah, I'm 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 excited, and uh, I hope that it takes up the next thirty years of my life the way that these books did. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be dead. <laughs> Awful, Judd. How about you? Uh, I'm in. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll watch until they make me throw my remote okay, across the room. Like I'm mm -hmm. I'm waiting for that moment, and I but I hope it never comes, and and I hope 
uh, that I get to, you know, feel wonderment, uh, you know, I think comparisons to Game of Thrones are inevitable. And that, that moment where Tyrion sees a dragon for the first time fly overhead, like that's what I'm looking for, like all the time okay. with these shows. So, you know, I got it a little bit with Shadar Logoth uh, in the second episode. And and uh, I thought the dark friend and the way that the that, that whole thing on, you know, un, was kind of unveiled was was clever and and interesting. And I'm in. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm I'm in, in, interested uh, I would like things to look a little cooler, uh, but yeah, I'll shrug. That's okay. I'm we're spoiled. We've we've seen dragons melt knights. Like we can just yeah. we can just shut up and take the samurai swords we're dealt, and 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 uh, <laughs> and and it's all right. Uh, yeah, I, it's cool. I, the the fourteen year old me is absolutely buzzing, and and I'm willing to like let that let that be, and and just enjoy it for what it is. So yeah, intrigued. That's awesome. All right. Lauren, what do you think? I mean, are, you, are you in? Yeah. Um, for all the Easter eggs that everyone else that didn't read them uh, is missing. That is that is what I'm here for. Uh, um, all the uh, the little little things. Um, but I, I hope that it lasts. That's my only concern mm. is is it not getting um the people who didn't read the books, which is most people, most people didn't read the books. Um, so we'll see. Um, and uh, Rand is Hayden Christensen and Ryan Philippi. Philippi? All right. Felipe. Okay. Yeah. Felipe. So got to see more. Felipe. Yeah. Got to see more of him, you know. I, I would love to see weekly um, uh, uh, Easter eggs listed by you on our fan club that would be amazing oh. because most of them i'd be like Holy. what who where <laughs> names uh um, yes i i had um a th four quick things please uh lan and moraine taking a bath together yeah, was an was... interesting thing that didn't happen in the books no. that i think gave their relationship depth because it was a um an intimacy without sexuality i thought mm. that showed that their the depth of their bond nice um mm. yeah that's really there good. was that the burning of the acidi in the second was a, a level of brutality that i don't remember especially that early on in the books and mm -hmm. an article that i had, had read mentioned that it was kind of a, a game, game of, of thronification. Thrones, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, and they kind of held on that for a lot longer than the, the shot was really on this burning woman longer than I needed to see. Um, mm -hmm. but, it was but I the understand. artistic shot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, that was, was, that was, it was the artistic shot in the, in the reflection and yeah. We yeah. wanted to make you aware that that was their artistic shot. Like that yeah, was, this is it. That's ours. Yeah, that's that's when we're complaining about our shots. This is what you get, Mister. Yeah. Um, oh, there was, there was other stuff too, but I, that's there's all two I more. Know. We can't. There's two that. more. Wait, what, what? What are they? Come on. <laughs> well, there was the dark fiend uh, when when uh, when she got the knife through the neck. Hmm. Uh, that was that was not what I wanted. To, that wasn't it. But I don't remember the other. Two. <laughs> when I'm Perry sorry. kills, uh, ac uh, accidentally kills his oh, wife. Man. That was. That really hit hard for me. That was just like, yeah. I, I don't know if it was the the actor portraying it, it was Marcus Rutherford who uh, is Perrin. Uh, just like the the horror of like they survived. They had survived the horrible thing that was happening to them, yeah. and just swung wide and in such a brutal fashion killed someone he loved so much. Uh, I mean. It, it was difficult because I, I you watch everything from the current lens, right? So you're like, this woman existed to die to give Perrin a personality, yeah, in a way. Yeah. But like, at the same time, there is a lot of 
genuine emotion that happens because fantasy violence is just never uh, an issue. Never an issue. People swing swords and axes and shoot arrows into combat all the time. No one ever gets friendly fired. No one, no one ends up getting hurt that you didn't expect to get hurt. So there is some gravitas to this at the same time. So, and I, honestly, I would be happy if the rest of the series is f not full of people getting axed to the sides, but full of that duality of this isn't exactly what you wanted, but we're making you question what you've come to accept mm. in fantasy. Yeah. So I, I, I really yeah. wanted, I, I was really excited about her because she wasn't in the books. Yeah. And she seemed non-binary. Like she, yeah. she didn't fit in with the women's circle stuff. And and yeah. I was like, oh shit, they're doing something really different. This is gonna be really cool. And and yeah, I was disappointed with that decision. Uh, uh well, and, and maybe that's okay. So, and and I'll chuckle the yeah, obviously, clearly it's okay. But yeah. uh I, I like creatively, I dis I thought that decision was not as strong as it could have been. No, so I mean there was an yeah. article I read. So the character did exist in the books like somebody asked Perrin like what if none of this ever happened and you had just stayed in Emmons Field there was a girl and, yeah and he there said was a girl, I think, but, and, but it was a, it was wow. the same name it oh, wasn't, wow. they weren't married no wow. they, were, they weren't married yeah he was talking but about he, this he, is the girl I would have wow. he, he yeah. said I probably would have just married but so I don't and so I don't think that she died no no I in I think the, she wasn't the they book. weren't I don't think they're in a relationship I think this was in the book they that's, were in a, a cool story. Touch. That's a they cool were just, I, I read that. This was just like where... somebody I, I mentioned. Oh, that's great. And then yeah. in this, they adapted it. So that the... almost makes it better and worse. Oh, it's it's it's. I think it's really interesting because now this we can see that we can look at this whole show as another turning of the wheel that's different than the books. Ooh, uh, I like this that. Can, this can we're in the multiverse be of like, madness. This can literally be like a whole other thing, and and all bets are off. Like who we think the Dragon Reborn was in the books just might not be the dragon reborn this time. i and, love that and i think that I would love be that. awesome one of that best... opens it up to what you were talking about about maybe breaking the yeah yeah the binary mold i mean if you want to see the internet explode wow change who the dragon reborn is and like it that yeah it will burn down like it will when... just burn down if you do it in a clever way the way we've built up in the world's greatest podcast just now <laughs> uh, i think that because one of the m most interesting features of the wheel of time is this wheel it's it's a kind of story that doesn't get told a lot it's the the wheel of fortune thing right right it's not one in the big archetype of the seven to twelve different whatever uh story traditional types of stories it's the one that gets told the least it's a reincarnation reincarnation and the and specifically uh the wheel of fortune so if you make that as part of the reason for the adaptation and you do it cleverly like little changes through time and keep hinting that no this is what this is what the book's about I think that could be amazing. Mm -hmm. Lauren, I think I cut into you. I, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, it was just, that was one thing that I noticed when Maureen said the Dragon Reborn could be him or her. I'm yeah. Like, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, which I watched um, a video and the woman on the video was screaming about stuff like that. And I was yeah. just like, what are you so yeah. angry? So well, this angry. is a good this is a good place to do plugs for non-pro. We do not scream about things like that. We're just trying to like have fun. We enjoy right. ourselves and we celebrate the things that make us happy. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Twitch account, wherever this is broadcasting. Probably on YouTube. Just do everything. Follow us everywhere. Follow uh, Judd and Natty at their podcasts on their websites. Lauren, follow her on the fan club where she's going to do a week by week uh, uh, recap of Easter eggs that I will have just not gotten any of them. Uh, you know what? Stay tuned to the end of this. We're going to end right now, but I'm going to tell a weird story that happened to me while we were watching uh, with my family. Uh, so this is our goodbyes, but stay tuned and you get a little Easter egg for, I guess we'll post this on Patreon. Good night, everybody. And we'll, we'll see the next episode on Friday. Yay. All right, so this is the little thing. I don't even know if I want to post this anywhere. But, are we, are uh, we still live? We we are still recording. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I didn't want to do this live just in case we needed to polish anything out, although it's not going to be edited. It's going to go right up there. Um, uh, it'll probably be up in, on Friday morning so people can kind of look at it for an hour before they mm -hmm. commit to episode four. All right, so this is what happened to me while I was watching uh, the 
the first three episodes watching with my wife i'm palestinian my wife is egyptian and and her mother is over and we're watching this together and they throw when Egwene um leaps kind of jumps pushed over in pushed. the ritual to the river pushed yeah, yeah. pushed <laughs> uh, she goes in and my uh mother-in-law says something in arabic and the accent for palestinian and egyptian people are significantly different so i don't catch everything she says uh she says something really quickly and i all i hear is married to the river Oh, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I didn't listen to it. And my wife answers, and we do this all the time. We kind of respond to each other in like Arab, English, whatever. And she'll say, uh, no, she she's not married to it because she uh, uh, is going to survive this. And I'm like, what did you what are you guys talking about? And I stop for a minute. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And they're like, and my wife is like, oh, um. My mom's saying that she is, she's like one of the brides of the river. I'm like, what are you talking about? Brides of the, you know, brides of the river. It's when you, when a woman ceremoniously marries the Nile and is thrown in or jumps in as a sacrifice. And I'm like, what the, what is this? That when, she's like, they did that. They haven't done that in a while. Important. How long ago was a while? <laughs> in a while. <laughs> She oh, says, wow. oh no, no, it was before Islam. And I'm like, okay, fuck it. All right, fine, whatever. <laughs> but the fact that oh, they the two of them, and, and, and obviously it's so old that we don't even know how accurate this is. This it yeah. may never have actually happened. But they have like a folklore background that was women who were married to the river where there, this was a ritual sacrifice that you would you throw someone into the Nile as a way of ensuring the crops or whatever. And for me, what was really fascinating is, is my wife isn't really big. She read Harry Potter, but she doesn't really like, she's not a big fantasy person. Uh, my mother-in-law, not at all. Like occasionally will be like, this isn't real, right? I'm like, no, it's not real. It's, that's a, that's an orc. Um, <laughs> and like to them, they had, when they saw that, they knew what they, they, they auto completed what the story was. Wow. From their own cultural that's... background. And it oh, was so it's kind of like what you away. were doing where you, we're tying things into Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, yeah, I was tying it into not only Lord of the Rings, but also like role playing games I had played with people yeah. who were fans of Wheel of Time and brought in Wheel of Time to those games. It's amazing. Yeah. Everything references itself, and it's just one big, yeah, one wonderful knot. Of we could have done a whole other hour comparing it to Lord of the Rings, I feel like, because, oh, yeah, like there was the whole thing with like getting it's across the river. And, oh, and yeah. like that was just like you know the guys getting debris and and it was very much a hey you're not Middle Earth anymore like it was so obvious like they it was so and and Jordan did that a bit too like there there were there were homages to the Lord of the Rings like in the first book all over the place uh, I think right. there was an, there, there was I like an inn called fan. like the Nine Rings Inn and and it, it almost feels like this the the series was meant as and I think people have said it like an, an American answer to the Lord of the Rings totally um and I could see the elements of it and there was definitely I think for good reason the series kind of thumbed their noses and were like yeah this isn't Lord of the Rings and then right. maybe yeah. in a way this isn't Game of Thrones but not so much that this isn't Game of Thrones much more like this can be Game of Thrones we will show a woman severed her hand right. for like a um, good minute Lauren this is good for you uh, deadline article we can firmly say the Wheel of Time was the most watched series premiere of the year and one of the top five series launches yeah. uh, of all time for Prime Video I mean yes. I was yeah. Uh, see, season two is, is green lit. Like that's that's yes. that's done. Okay. It's, but but now just you know, twenty will, more seasons. Will we get season twelve? Like that's that's <laughs> uh, yeah 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 right. Yeah, I think they need uh, at least a, a minimum of ten, which is a I, lot. That's a lot of that's a lot of Bezos bucks. Get that they, shit done in five, guys. Get that shit done in yeah, five. Cut some of the fat. Cut some of the fat on this. Sean we learn? Oh, oh, no, I need. I need all of it. I need all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I read it all. They, uh, you have to they watch it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's hazing. It's fantasy hazing. Yes, oh, yes, oh, very much that. so. I love, I love that. It. All right, this is great. Oh, um, if we want to do this again at some point, I mean, I don't know if we could do this every week for every episode. But certainly, we could talk about it on the fan club. That's easy enough. But if we want to, I mean, I I like all you people. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, would totally do this again. So absolutely. I, would, I, I had a great time. Yeah. Yay. yeah. All right. Thanks for geeking out with me. Happy Thanksgiving or whatever. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thanksgiving. Bye. Bye. Bye.